Do you have disconnected product data? Is it a chore to find the right specs, bills of material, manufacturing instructions, or quality data? Is it hard to reuse existing products because data is spread across multiple systems? Is it hard to share designs and get feedback? Your information is falling through the cracks. You need FlowSeal. Let's pull those product requirements together with your specifications. Just a little bit of FlowSeal will do the trick. Let's connect all of your design files with your commercial product information. FlowSeal's patented formula creates strong links between related data. With FlowSeal, you can even integrate your data with your product development workflows. FlowSeal is guaranteed to plug the holes in your product data across the entire business. Product development is a team sport. Watch PLM 411 to find out how to connect all of your product-related information and processes and plug the holes in your company's profits with PLM. Welcome to this episode of PLM 411. I'm Jim Brown of Tech Clarity. Today I'm joined by Stan Presbolinski of SimData. Um, today we're going to talk about an important topic, which is uh, uh, customization in PLM. So um, obviously there's lots of reasons that people customize their PLM software, maybe some good, maybe some bad. Um, but uh, why, don't, why don't you start off and give me your thoughts on why people customize PLM? Well, I, you know, every company in my experience working with industrial companies, every company thinks they're unique. So they want to do what they've Sometimes what they've always done, sometimes what they think they should be doing. Um, so they want the system to match what they do. I mean, I've worked with Asian companies that wanted the system to look exactly like their paper form, for instance, mm -hmm. which is an extreme version. But in, in doing that work, a lot of times we find you go from one company to another, they're all doing basically the same thing, maybe 80, 85%. And very often the customizations they want are things that they probably shouldn't be doing anyway. And on occasion, you do find people that really scrutinize their customizations, and, mm -hmm. and you find that you know the 10 percent or 15 percent or whatever they uh, you know they may end up with really are truly things that are unique to them and, and hopefully strategic to them. But unfortunately, I think that is definitely uh, you know probably the exception to the rule. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about why customization has uh, you know ha has downsides to it. I mean, obviously. There's some reasons to do it, whether it's, uh, you know, whether it is trying to meet that 10% that is strategic to you. Um, it may be for customer acceptance, you know, you have to ma make it match the form because if not, we can't get the buy-in from this VP that, you know. So there are, there are reasons, but what's the downside? Well, you want to be able to progress, right? You're, you're paying money to these software solution providers and they're investing and they're making new versions and they're adding stuff. And very often, the more you customize, the less you can take advantage of the new stuff that is becoming available because you can't move from version to version. Yeah, you get locked into the old versions because of customizations. I've, I've seen situations where you, you take a look and it's just as easy to go to a different PLM system than it is to upgrade to the next release. Well, that's actually what's happening a lot in the market now is you have people that are on their second or third generation and they're finding exactly that, that to figure out what they did and why they did it all in the first place and then to redo it Let's just start over. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, I, I think things are changing a little bit. I mean, may, maybe we should talk a little bit about what is, uh, and, and it's a gray line between what is, you know, what is a customization versus a configuration, and and those sorts of things. I don't. Do you have a clean, clean, crisp answer for that, or? Well, it, configuration should be things that you can do within the bounds of the software as defined by the provider, right? What what things can you go into a dialog box or a menu? and make your own. Right. And usually customization is more about coding, yeah. at least historically. So that, that's usually the line that we try to draw. Yeah, and sometimes, there, sometimes it gets a little, a little bit, you know, if you, what if we have just a little bit of a script that sits on the outside? Um, and and one, of the, one of the nice things that I've seen recently is that some of the architectures that are out there really lend themselves better to, to being uh, customized in a way where you're not being invasive to the existing code. You're not replacing the existing code, but you're, um, you know, using an API, for example, either to, e either on the outbound side or on the inbound side, um, and those tend to be easier to upgrade over time. Yeah, well, the software companies have learned. I mean, they many of them have been doing this for a long time, and they learn that 
it's hard to support their customers. It's actually hard to get more revenue out of your customer because if your customer can't move, you can't sell them more things, right? So um, they've learned and they've tried to build their solutions or architect their solutions in a way that you can do more things in a configuration mode so that they can move, be moved between versions. Yeah, and maybe the, maybe the extreme of that is cloud, um, yeah. particularly if you're in a situation with, where there is one code base, um, you know, and, and everybody's running a, a single instance, um, more or less. Yeah, that, to me, that's gonna be the one, one of the big tensions in cloud, because if you think about how we started, right? We started talking about, well, people want it to customize it. Well, cloud, you're not gonna be able to do as much because what you're doing is sort of bounded by the way the cloud system was architected. Right, which is a plus and a minus yes. in some cases, yeah. right? Yeah. Absolutely, and, and, I, and I think a lot of the cloud systems tend to spend more time trying to make sure that those configurations are more robust. You can you know, put in custom workflows, custom data, and things like that, so good. Well, it's, uh, it's an interesting topic. It's definitely one that people, uh, people ask about a lot, so I appreciate you spending some time talking to me about it. Great, Jim, thanks for the opportunity. Thanks.